I thought that was not gonna work. Oh well. You go. You go like this. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. It's liquid magic. Oh. The winners of this year's Tony party will have their names etched on the base here. There used to be other names, but I kind of smeared them at some point. Uh, no, we can stop the fire. It's right here. You stop on that. <laughs> Open this. <laughs> Ooh, frozen vanilla bread balls. This is the worst night of my life. Oh, I would steal the bread balls. Oh. This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you don't miss the latest from the Disney theme parks around the world. Today's show is sponsored by a really cool way and likely really the only way to use your Magic Bands at home, including your Magic Band Plus. That's right, you can take home your very own Magic Band Reader. Here they are. There's over 35 different designs to choose from, like Classic Mickey, which you actually have that's here on the desk. There it is. Uh, there's the fireworks, which includes Happily Ever After and Wishes, two shows in one. There's an Epcot Spaceship Earth one, which includes the full three-minute be three Beacons of Magic show. Haunted Mansion, Carousel of Progress, Splash Mountain, which of course is closing in just a few weeks. And you can control your lights with your Magic Band using the Smart Outlet Upgrade. I would have a tree here, uh, but Tony Ragu hosted News Tonight on Thursday and wrecked the place. So our tr I don't know where the tree went. Have to find it, but you. But we did on the go back two episodes. You can watch me tap my magic band, and this turns the tree on and off. We could do it right now. Do I have another magic band? That doesn't work. Here we go. Some of my magic bands are bad. There you go. It does a whole. Remember wishes, kids? It does a whole little wishes show with video and lights, and I like. I like that there's these lights back here that illuminate your wall. Uh, behind this, which is super cool, and Mickey and the gang are there. The little reader, the little Cinderella castle. Very cool. And that's when the fireworks would go like that. Remember, kids? You know, brings back memories, but also Happily Ever After, which will be back in April, which we're very excited about. There it goes. We have a special offer for News Today. I wasn't sure how, how long the show was. Special offer today for News Today readers. Enter promo code NEWS15 for 15% 15 off, and you can pick yours up at magicbandreaders.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's show. Here now the news for December 17th, 2022. Nearly a month after Bob Chapek was forced out as chief executive officer of the Walt Disney Company, more details have emerged surrounding what was taking place behind the scenes of the C-suite shakeup that led to the return of Bob Iger. In an article from the Wall Street Journal, they detailed uh, the frustration of other Walt Disney Company executives and the steps that were taken for Bob Iger's return as the company's chief executive. The contention between the returning CEO and Chapek, who was ousted in November, began uh, before Iger had even left the company, but it was a series of poor decisions that left a number of high-ranking uh, high other employees and board members dissatisfied with the direction the company was heading. According to the WSJ article, Chapek was unhappy that Iger, his predecessor, held control long after stepping down, seemingly undermining Chapek on several occasions. We had heard this before. From the start, Iger held on to his office at the Disney corporate headquarters in Burbank, using it to host meetings with department heads without extending an invitation to Chapek. Being frozen out of the meetings, Bob Chapek grew increasingly unhappy about Iger sticking around after assuming the top job in 2020. The article contends that, quote, Chapek told friends that Mr. Iger's attitude seemed to be, they work for me, not for you. The COVID-19 pandemic further drew contention between Iger and Chapek. Iger and Chapek, the two CEOs, found themselves at odds uh, with Chapek wanting to lay off Disney employees right away, preserving the bottom line, while Iger pushed to, for the company to maintain employment for cast members until federal relief was in place. You may remember we had this story a couple weeks ago. Iger's plan eventually went out and, boards, and the board backed uh, that, uh, which Chapek, uh, left Chapek feeling disenfranchised. 
A series of hurdles, both unavoidable and brought on by the CEO himself, removed any hope for the two chief executives to work together cohesively. Chapek was reportedly upset with Iger's continued involvement and unwillingness to hand over the reins, while Iger found himself increasingly less confident in Chapek's ability to lead the company. Man, if someone had only asked me before giving him that job, if only there was someone who could have warned them. Uh, when Chapek did finally take over the company, his lack of visibility among guests and cast members and his decisions surrounding Marvel and flip-flopping on Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill were just a few of the many scenarios in which guests and the general public took exception. A hiring freeze and reported layoffs imminent, cast members were also growing frustrated. When the board of directors announced Chapek's contract extension in tw uh, through 2024, fans were audibly angry, even booing Chapek at public and private events. Of course, we covered when it happened at D23 Expo. That is in the Wall Street Journal article, by the way, for the people who deny the booze. That's the Wall Street Journal reporting it as fact. Creatives within the company and an internal survey of cast members indicated very low morale as well. According to the article, some company directors began talking informally among themselves about whether Chapek was still capable of steering the ship. Quote, one option they considered was replacing Mr. Chapek with board member Mark Parker, a former longtime head of Nike Incorporated, as an interim CEO while the board hunted for a successor. Iger, too, was upset with the decision to extend Chapek's contract. And soon after the announcement, the Wall Street Journal reports Mr. Iger told a friend he believed Chapek was a failure in the most important measures of success for a CEO. Internal satisfaction, investor relations, and consumer support. By the summer of 2022, the board was also clear with their frustration over the performance of the company's top executive. After one particular meeting with the board, Chapek reportedly grew angry with Disney CFO Christine McCarthy for sharing financial details without first clearing the numbers with him, uh, catching him off guard. This seemed to unravel any hope of the two working together effectively. The Wall Street Journal reports that board members Safra Katz, Amy Chang, Calvin McDonald, and Derricka Rice grilled Chapek over the company's poor performance. McCarthy addressed most of the questions, later telling associates that her boss had fumbled his answers. The report contends that relations between the CEO and CFO were so frayed that he didn't include her in an October board meeting. Chapek also told executives that she had lost focus, distracted by her husband's ailing health, and had become unstable, comments repeated to some Disney directors. Ms. McCarthy learned about it from colleagues. Reportedly, Parks Chairman Josh Tamaro was considering leaving the company over all of this, and there were serious concerns that he and Alan Bergman, head of the film studio, were both about to exit as a direct result of Chapek's actions. Fourth quarter earnings eventually sealed the fate of Chapek, who, against the advice of McCarthy, tried to claim success while reporting on the less-than-expected earnings period rather than face the music head-on. The Wall Street Journal reports that on November 16th, McCarthy took matters into her own hands. Without having confronted her boss or seeking approval of the board, she called Iger to gauge his interest in returning as CEO. She caught Iger at a low point. He had been telling friends he was more concerned over the direction of the company than ever. Iger reportedly welcomed the gesture, feeling complacent in retirement and a call to stifle the recent instability felt under Chapek. With Iger eager to return as chief executive, the board was quick to act, informing Chapek of his immediate removal as he prepared to attend Elton John's final U.S. concert being held that evening at Dodger Stadium. He received the news from the chairman of the board of directors, Susan Arnold, who called and told him, quote, his services were no longer needed. I, I know I'm supposed to report the news without opinion. I can't help but I can't get the smile off my face every time I read that he was told his services were no longer needed. Um, all of this just sounds, uh, it sounds so much like the interactions we had with Bob Chapek. Um, uh, many of you will know we had, and I know people joked about it as if it was not real, but there was a very real war sort of between WWNT the fan community and and Disney at large, mostly with Bob Chapek and mostly under, you know, direction of Bob Chapek. There were plenty of people that didn't want to be a part of it. They were kind of forced to be a part of it. And all these things that were just said align so perfectly with some of the things we went through. I'm sure many of you remember um, when we announced Tron ahead of the D23 Expo. Um, later on, PR people told me they were yelled at because we had announced it early. He didn't get to say it on stage. So that that like uh, the way he handled other people in the company, which is stated there again, it's not surprising. Um, and then an, an unwillingness to be honest with the public, right? Again, like uh, he, he was advised not to try to paint a positive picture of the financials because they weren't great. And he still did. And that's what did him in. 
And if you remember, when we had leaked early that Disney was going to get rid of the Country Bear Jamboree and redo the Tiki Room as Moana, which were both very real projects, by the way, despite what the Disney Parks blog had to go out and say under, again, Chapek's direction, that, that's what he did. He wanted to control the narrative, whether the narrative was real or not. He would say whatever he wanted to say to claim victory. He did it to us. He tried to do it as CEO, and I'm glad, you know, again, I know it's the news and I'm not supposed to weigh in, but I'm glad he got what he deserved. Um, and I'm glad the world got to see what we put up with. And, uh, you know, it's the greatest. You don't have to, no one has to buy me anything this year. I got the greatest Christmas gift of all, all and it's, you know, uh, to use the adage, it is the gift that keeps on giving as we continue to get these stories about what happened behind the scenes. But again, um, in the end, it's, it's such a great positive outlook for next year. I'm very excited for next year and the future of the company under Iger and Demaro and, and all of these people who um, I think made the right call. But let's move on, shall we? Monorail Black was among the first of the Walt Disney World monorails to be completely refurbished way back in 2019, but it is now re uh, returned to service again after a minor refurbishment. We caught Monorail Black at the Transportation and Ticket Center, and among the updates are new headlights. The red deltas on the, uh, on the black stripe around the monorail were added back in 2019, so they're not new. But new are the new red pinstripes that have been added to the bottom of the monorail. Those are, those are pretty sleek. The red pinstripes are barely visible when the monorail is in the station, but they're very clear when it's moving along the track. And inside, the interior design is the same as it was in 2019. Um, right now, here's a better look at those red pinstripes, which I, I just, I like this. I hope this is happening to all of them. I think it's a nice look. Um, very, very exciting. Several of the floats in the electrical water pageant at Walt Disney World are currently out of commission, leaving nearly half of the show missing. Reportedly, there's a major issue with the barges that requires major repairs, and they'll be out for six to eight weeks. This puts them on track for a roughly January return. When they return, the show floats should be exactly the same as it was previously. At least that's what cast members have told us. The barges missing are the dolphins, crocodile, dinosaur, seahorses, and Neptune. You know, the dinosaur, the, the best part of the electrical water pageant, of course. Uh, electrical water pageant is a show that takes place on the Seven Seas Lagoon and Bay Lake every night, weather permitting. It features 14 different floats with lights depicting images of sea creatures. And the pageant debuted originally on, uh, with the opening of Walt Disney World in 1971. It's changed slightly over the years, but it is, I think of everything still at Disney World, one of the things that is most true to its original form. It's my personal favorite thing on property. Walt Disney World has added courtesy to their experience updates page on their website. The page was established during the reopening of Disney World in the summer of 2020 when COVID-19 precautions were at their height. The page still exists without, uh, with information about health and safety, theme park reservations, the mobile app, and now courtesy. The courtesy section reads, be the magic you want to see in the world. You must always remember to treat others with respect, kindness, and compassion. Those who can't live up to this simple wish may be asked to leave Walt Disney World Resort. Of course, this is in response to the slew of physical altercations in the last two years between guests uh, and sometimes even with cast members. Earlier this week, two guests were seen fighting during Harmonious at Epcot. This summer, two families made national news when they got into a hand-to-hand -hand brawl in the middle of the Magic Kingdom's Fantasyland over an alleged bump in a queue. At Hollywood Studios, a man claimed he was assaulted by children but ended up arrested for child abuse. A screaming match at the Transportation and Ticket Center thankfully didn't get physical, but there have also been multiple fights on the Magic Kingdom ferry boats. There's been fights at Disneyland Resort as well, including one during the return of Fantasmic. And these are just a small portion of the incidents from this year alone, which we've reported all of those right here on this show. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, the Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back, let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next magical Disney trip. The best part? Their services are free. Visit www.travel for details. An Anastasia mug is the first merchandise for the film to arrive in the history of Disney parks at Walt Disney World. Disney acquired Anastasia back in 2019 when they bought 20th Century Fox, but no merchandise related to the classic Don Bluth flick has appeared in the Disney parks before now. So those of you who understand the history of Disney animation a little bit probably understand why this is insane. Of course, Don Bluth left Disney um, as sort of this, uh, if you haven't watched Waking Sleeping Beauty on Disney+, Plus, it's a fantastic documentary. It talks about this a little bit. Um, but he left Disney, stole a number of animators, and went to make animated movies in a very Disney style for other studios. Um, and Anastasia was one of those movies he made in the mid-90s with Fox. 
Um, and so it is wild that Anastasia is now technically a Disney princess and now has merchandise at the parks for its 25th anniversary. Uh, the mug we found is 1999. It has a uh, golden pattern with green borders, and Anastasia in her yellow dress is pictured in an oval on one side. Uh, the green flower from Anastasia's necklace is on the side across from the handle. It's also beneath the handle, and Dimitri is in another oval on the mug. The inside is white with a quote from the film, I don't like tea, just hot water and lemon. The stoneware mug is 13 ounces. Uh, and we found it at Fulton's General Store at Disney's Port Orleans Resort, Riverside. And um, someone better go check if hell's frozen over. Five new menu items, including sweet and sour salads, are now available at Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe in Tomorrowland at the Magic Kingdom. There's a grilled chicken sandwich for $12.59. It's grilled chicken uh, with citrus soy mayonnaise and mango cucumber slaw on brioche bun with french fries. The sweet and sour salad for $9.59 is mixed green salad topped with pineapple, peppers, and crispy noodles served with sweet and sour dressing. There is a chicken salad version of that. It's all those same ingredients plus grilled chicken. And then last but not least, there is a shrimp version for $12.59. Again, all those same ingredients, but also shrimp. As far as drinks, there's a new Lunar Lemonade for $5.99. It's Minute Maid Lemonade with Desert Pear Syrup over ice. And the Sully Slush, also $5.99. Blue Raspberry Slush with Purple Whipped Cream. You can watch a review of all these items right here on our channel. You can read the review at WDWNT.com. Disney is now testing background music around Tron Light Cycle Run at the Magic Kingdom. You can hear the music in the video right here on our channel. The music loop is what guests will hear as they wait outside to enter the attraction, not necessarily during the ride. The loop is about four minutes long. In the video, you can also see weighted ride vehicles being tested. And earlier this week, we saw cast members riding Tron Light, Light Cycle Run for the first time. We've also seen testing of the canopy lights for the past several months. Also, in the last week, we heard new audio related to Tron during testing of the Walt Disney World Railroad. They're actually Imagineers are programming uh, the audio for the railroad as we speak. So that's why we managed to hear that. Tron Light Cycle Run will officially open in the spring of next year. An official opening date has not been announced. It's rumored to be in early April, though. After completing the seven adventures, what a terrible term, of the DuckTales World Showcase Adventure in Epcot, guests are treated to a small finale in the game. You can check out all of our playthroughs of the pavilions, including China, Japan, Germany, France, Norway, Mexico, and the United Kingdom. Do note, even if you watch these videos, each pavilion has several different missions that are randomly assigned. So your game might look a little different than ours. There's always something new to see. That's why you got to replay it a couple of times. Once you play through all of it once, the finale will become available. You can watch all those videos and as well a video of the finale uh, on uh, right here on our YouTube channel, of course, uh, post about all these adventures at WDWNT.com. Harmonious has been added to the list of offerings going away at the end of the Walt Disney World 50th anniversary celebration in the My Disney Experience app and on the website as well. We knew Harmonious would be replaced in 2023 with a new 100 Years of Wonder Nighttime Spectacular, but no time frame was provided. Its inclusion on the Don't Miss Your Chance to See list indicates it will end with the 50th anniversary celebration on March 31st, 2023. Also on the Don't Miss Your Chance to See list is the Beacons of Magic, Mickey Celebration Cavalcade, and 50th Anniversary Merchandise. It's rumored that the new show honoring the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company and debuting during the 40th anniversary of Epcot will use drones and that the taco barges will go away. Epcot Forever will return briefly before the sh new show's debut. Disney Enchantment will also end sometime next year and Happily Ever After will return. The rumor is that that will be at the end of the 50th anniversary celebration as well. The American Adventure at Epcot was supposed to reopen today, but it has been delayed. It will now reopen on Monday, December 19th. It's been closed since September 19th. Guests can still enter the building itself to see the gingerbread displays and watch the Voices of Liberty perform their holiday set. Just a few days ago, it was announced that the Roundup Rodeo Barbecue in Toy Story Land at Hollywood Studios will now open in the spring of 2023. That's delayed from the end of this year. But Disney has shared photos also from the interior of the new restaurant. The backstory is that Andy has built a rodeo restaurant out of toys and other spare items. Pixar animators designed figures and created artwork unique to the Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. Animators and Imagineers even designed full comic strips starring Woody, which Andy has used as part of the dining room ceiling. There's a quote-unquote steam train supported by colored pencils, a house of cards, and game boards. The cardboard box walls are covered in drawings of various roundup scenes. 
Jesse, Trixie, and Bo Peep with her sheep, Billy, Goat, and Gruff, are the stars of the rodeo. Uh, you see all this when it opens in the spring, featuring, uh, as you might have guessed, barbecue fare. This week at the Tower Hotel gift shop at the exit of uh, Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, we saw that a new carpet featuring the Hollywood Tower Hotel logo has been installed. There's now a maroon runner-styled section of carpet as you enter the gift shop or as you exit, depending where you're coming from. It does look similar to a red carpet. So as the movie stars exit the hotel, they're walking along a premier carpet in a way. The Hollywood Tower Hotel insignia logo is placed just inside the doors at either end of the carpet. It is yellow with the HTH monogram. The maroon coloring looks distressed as if it's been unattended to for a long time. This Persian style carpet has a darker tone than the old pattern. It's intricate, an intricate pattern with a maroon background. The photo you're looking at now is the old carpet that had a brighter yellow forward pattern. Overall, that's a good, good change. Thematic changes, always, always good. With Avatar The Way of Water now in theaters and the Synergy Machine in full swing from Walt Disney World to Shanghai, it's not surprising to find a number of new food items right here in Orlando. The Avatar The Way of Water cocktail is 1850. It's available at Sanaa. It's available at Victoria Falls and Boma as well. It's African Star Rum, Bacardi Raspberry Rum, Bowls Blue Curacao, and Lemonade garnished with a Lotus Flower Glow Cube and Mint. In honor of the release of Avatar The Way of Water this month, they also have new limited time items at Satuli Canteen in Pandora at Animal Kingdom. Uh, there's the Ocean Moon Bowl for $17.49. It's blue noodles, tuna, watermelon radish, pickled daikon, rainbow carrots, avocado, cucumbers, and red cabbage with miso and sweet soy drizzle topped with micro cilantro. The Ilu Splash Margarita is $13.50. It's Corazon Blanco Tequila with kiwi sour mix, lime juice, and a kiwi slice. And the Metcaina Mousse is $6.29. It's flourless chocolate cake, chocolate mousse, raspberry gelée, mango coolie, boba pearls, and a milk and white chocolate garnish. There are reviews of all these on our website. I also did a whole video where I go try all the food. I go to see Avatar. We even check out the new projection show. Uh, be sure to check out that video right here on the channel. Disney has finally confirmed that the lobby of the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa will be refurbished next year. Uh, we reported earlier this year that the lobby would be renovated as part of the ongoing update to the resort. Disney publicly defended their remodel of the resort without specifically stating the lobby would be updated. Uh, of course, this story goes back all the way, by the way, to 2017. January of 2017, we posted uh, the whole story about Bob Chapek came in to the division. He thought the hotel was dated. He really wanted to rip the place apart. Uh, but anyway, in the new blog post, Disney stated, quote, the ongoing renovation will also include an upcoming refurbishment of the lobby, which will maintain the classic theming you know and love with some fresh new enhancements. Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa will celebrate its 35th anniversary on July 1st of 2023. Fun fact, the Disney Parks blog wrote it was the 30th anniversary of the hotel, which isn't real because it opened in 1988, by the way. Good job, guys. Keep it up. Disney is celebrating 70 years of Walt Disney Imagineering with a behind-the-scenes look at the creative team behind Disney Parks. Imagineering was officially formed on December 16, 1952, 70 years ago uh, this week, as Walt Disney Incorporated, a group of Disney filmmakers was chosen to design and develop Disneyland at that time. The group was later named WED Enterprises, standing, of course, for Walter Elias Disney, and then eventually to Walt Disney Imagineering. Today, Imagineers represent more than 100 different disciplines with more than 500 U.S. patents from Walt Disney Imagineering and Walt Disney Imagineering Research and Development combined. In honor of the department's 70th anniversary, iWorks & Company, the studio that produced the Imagineering story on Disney+, Plus, created a short video featuring old behind-the-scenes footage of Imagineers at work, which you should go and watch. A real quick shout-out. I know there are many uh, former and current Imagineers that watch the show. Um, wherever you guys are, thank you so much. Um, for the part you've played in this 70-year legacy that has given uh, myself and um, all the people watching um, such amazing memories. So thank you. Congratulations to everyone who's ever worked at WDI um, for what they've accomplished. Uh, absolutely incredible. For the absolute latest on these stories and all those that didn't make it to today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. Special shout out to all the WIGS members watching who make this show happen every week. Real quick again, thank you to a sponsor of today's show, uh, magicbandreaders.com. 
for uh, sending these over and for sponsoring the show. We really appreciate it. Please go pick one up. For the Worldwide Leader in Disney Parks News, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. From WDWNT-TV, this is Park Center. Join us each week for news and discussion topics from the Disney and Universal theme parks around the world. We cover the stories in a quick, concise, and fun format, and then our panel breaks down and debates some of the biggest issues and what they mean for us, the Parks fans. From the latest announcements to openings and delays to scandals and snacks and merchandise and more, we'll cover it all in 90 minutes. Join us live every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on YouTube at WDWNT-TV or watch episodes on demand anytime. You can also subscribe to the audio version of the show on your favorite podcast app.